Um, we're going to start with this examination with an interesting um, case, and that is Alec Manoa. We're going to start with Alec Manoa, um, who has quickly become my favorite, my favorite, not just player, but one of my favorite people, like celebrity people. Um, he does not back down from anybody, whether it's the Yankees, whether it's Garrett Cole, uh, or whether it's MLB's own people running their mouths about his uh, workout routines and his uh, body image and all that stuff. It's, it's awesome. And he stands up for his own teammates when people were talking about Alejandro Kirk. Like this kid, and, and let's be real, this is a kid. But Steve, initial thoughts, first of all, I know you you share my, my love. I mean, you may even have a, a bigger soft spot for Alec Manoa, but this kid gets it, right? Uh, he absolutely gets it. And yes, I have started therapy about this Manoa <laughs> fanboy thing that I have. I understand Um uh, I, I forgot we we're going to talk about because I would have put my WVU jersey. I actually bought an Alex Manoa WVU baseball jersey too, so I, I am seeking help for that. But uh, that's for a different episode. That, that's for the on pick circle. Okay. Um, <laughs> what about the T-shirt? <laughs> oh, I should have wore the T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but I see I have it in a glass case down in my living room, so I, I would have to take it out of the glass case, and I'd probably oh. drop the case, and I'd break it, and then I'd be upset. I bleed oh. on it. I don't want to do that. But <laughs> boy, but, this is but, really deteriorating. Have I haven't said anything about Alex Manoa's performance. I have not. No, no. He <laughs> does. He does get it. He is the staff. He is the staff ace now. Okay, he is the Blue Jay. He's the face of the Blue Jays pitching staff. He is what Dave Steven was. He is what Roy Halladay was. He was what Esteban Luiza was. No. Oh. <laughs> I knew that would get you, Sean. Uh, but no, but I mean, I mean, he really is, again. You could argue that Gaussman is a more experienced pitcher. You could argue Jose Barrios might have the best stuff when he's on. You know, when he's really on for that day. But Alex Manoa is the ace of the staff, and he is, as Alex Manoa goes this year, that's how the Toronto Blue Jays are going to go. Interesting. So, Karen, your thoughts. Alec Manoa, is he? I guess the question first, before we even look at individual um, projections, Karen, might just very simple. Is he as good as he was last year? At, at least, if not better. He, I, I think he has another gear still. I think he's continuing to work on work on his craft. I mean, mm -hmm. what we saw from him in September, when everybody was saying, "Oh, he's going to regress," and and his his stats later in the season were starting to slip a little bit, and, and then he goes out and he's pitcher of the month for September. Like he's he's got it in him as good as he is to be even better. Right. And, and the other thing, like, I guess for me, one, uh, another example of like how he gets it is you go to the all-star game, you're mic'd up and you're, you're, you're strike out the side. Um, but you still manage to have the wherewithal to sit down and, with Justin Verlander and pick his brain. You know, you're at the all-star game and all the hoopla and all that stuff, but he, you know, he managed to kind of still focus on that 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 aspect of his game that he needs to refine, right? That and that, I mean that that's kind of stuff he can't really teach. Um, yeah. But but anyway, knowing that knowing that there are still things out there to learn, being willing to mm -hmm. listen to someone like Anjin Ryu and and things like that, because so so many of these guys they make it to the major leagues and they figure that well that's it. I've made it. I know mm -hmm. everything. I don't have to listen to anyone. And though those that know that there are still things that they can learn are the ones who will go that much further. Right. Agreed. One hundred percent. So the twenty-five-year-old Karen is projected. Um, first of all, let's start here. I wanted to talk about his innings pitched because this was a big story. You know, coming into last season was how is he going to handle a full season pitching in the big leagues? Um, you know, and they people pointed to the lost twenty twenty season. They they pointed to a whole bunch of things that um, you know gave them reason to think. Um, however. Uh, I think he kind of put all of that to rest last year with 196 uh, 
point two innings, uh, thirty one starts, and of course he went sixteen and seven um, over that span. So the question about longevity and how can he handle a full season, I think that's been put to bed. So that's where we'll start with our projections. Alec Manoa, um, again, 196.2 innings in 2022. Um, Steamer has him at 199 innings, 32 starts, making an extra start, uh, maybe having to do with where he is in the rotation, who, who, who knows why they're projected one extra start. Regardless, uh, Steve, I'm going to start with you. 199 innings for Alec Manoa. Is that a reasonable projection? I think that's a floor. And when we go a little deeper into the stats, I'll explain why that's a floor. But I, I think I think he's going to flirt with 200 innings for the majority of his career unless he has an injury season. And every starting pitcher has some kind of – right, exactly, Karen. Uh, has some kind of injury season. People forget. I mean, this is a kid that pitched a lot when he was younger because he had to go to all these showcases and play for all these traveling teams because he wasn't a highly regarded um, – Prospect. I mean, he didn't get many Division One offers, and the one that he did was at West Virginia. You know, and when he was in college, he played in summer leagues and pitched a pretty a pretty heavy load. Uh, they his freshman year was relatively light. I mean, that's what generally in college you do see. Um, but I mean, he's used to pitching and handling a really heavy workload. So to come out here and say oh, he's going to regress, or oh, this is it, or oh, this projection. Okay, you can project all kinds of things, but you, you, you cannot factor in character and just intensity and energy. You, 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 there's no way to quantify that. So if you want to do that with, with some 18 or 19-year-old kid, okay, fine. You know, you want to do that, okay. When you have a guy like Alex Manoa, you know, and again, I'm going to go back to the Dave, Steve, and Roy Halliday comparisons. Can you, ima- can you imagine anybody even mentioning casually in a press conference to either of those two guys, well, are you concerned about your innings or about your workload? <laughs> I, I can only imagine the amount of expletives that would be flowing from both of them if that happened. And a- Alex Manoa is just a rare breed. He's Roger Clemens. I mean, he's, you know, he has that stockier body type but it's not like he's all flab okay we're not talking about you know my 600 pound life here we're talking about a seasoned conditioned athlete okay a little bigger boned okay you want to go that fine it he can handle that workload so i would say 199 is is the floor and i'll explain why i think it's going to be more when we go a little deeper in projections all right. So, Karen, I'm going to, rather than ask you the, the same question, because I think, you know, we don't want to beat a dead horse here, but um, when we're looking at the number of starts, and I think this is an interesting um, kind of side conversation, or I guess the, the next kind of logical uh, conversation after the number of innings is the number of starts. And the reason I say that, um, so he's projected steamer at 32 starts. So again, that one extra start for 199 innings. So one extra start, but three extra innings. So Karen, my question is in order to kind of like surpass that 200 inning threshold, you have to be given a longer leash. So my question to you, Karen, is, is Alec Manoa not, and I don't mean in April when everybody's still kind of, you know, getting stretched out, but, you know, all things being equal, is Alec Manoa going to get that long enough leash um, in, if he were to make those 32 starts to get 200, 220, 230 or whatever? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Easy answer. <laughs> no, I mean, assuming that he's pitching well, which I think he will be most of the time, assume, assuming that his pitch count isn't absolutely ridiculous, then yeah, he'll he'll be allowed to go deeper into games. So. And 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 the, the reason I bring that up, right, is because this is a year uh, where clearly the Blue Jays are going to be trying every little thing they can think of in their calculator to come up with wins and and all of that stuff and advantages. And I wonder if that kind of philosophical change that we're seeing around baseball, where your starters will go five, maybe six innings, um, if that is going to continue with Alec Manoa. Or do you think that John Schneider will be more of a kind of 
see how it goes and kind of take his cue from Manoa in the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, as as I said, like, what's, what did he average just over six innings of starts in 2022? Like, I, I see it being at least that high and, and maybe a tiny bit higher again. His, I, I don't think they're going to go out there. <laughs> I, I still, one of the laughable things, going back to 2020 in the playoffs, that game, game one, Mac Schumacher started, and he went out and he was absolutely cruising. And for no reason whatsoever, Charlie Montoyo pulled him. And I can only speculate, as, as lots of others have, that that was the preconceived plan. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, watch the game that's in front of you, and if the game evolves in a way that's unexpected, evolve with the game. Like, don't don't stick with the plan if you don't have to stick with the plan, if the results dictate something else. So I, I think that's what's going to happen. I, I think there'll be <clears> – <throat> John Snyder might have some – tentative ideas of what he's going to do. But then if Manoa exceeds expectations on that day, he'll get a little bit longer leash. If he's having a bit of a rough outing, maybe he comes out early. But yeah, the overall, if his if his average was a bit over six innings last year, the average will be a little higher than it was. Okay. All right. Steve, I'm going to shift gears here now, and we're going to use a back of the baseball card stat um, so as to be easily digestible. Uh, ERA. We're going to look at ERA, and uh, just because it's one that everybody kind of is familiar with, um, and this is not a show, an episode where we're going to debate um, <laughs> which metrics are better. Uh, but Steve, in 2022, Alec Manoa put up a 2.24 ERA. Just like that's some nice pitching, um, regardless of whether how much stock you put in ERA. However, Steamer has him for next season at a 4.12 ERA. Steve, Steamer, I believe traditionally conservative. Let's call it that. Um, how conservative are they being with regard to his ERA, Steve? I wouldn't use the word conservative. I would use the <laughs> word stupid, misguided, moronic, idiotic, and numbers obsessed. But, of course, I just went down the path you said we can't go down, so I apologize for that. <laughs> I can see Alec Manoa having an ERA between, let's say, 3-3 three, three and 3-5. Three, that, that would not... I don't think that would really surprise me. I think when you start going deeper into games, uh, you, are, you, you can be prone to having that game or two or three where, okay, maybe you're going into the eighth inning and suddenly, for whatever reason, they're figuring you out. You know, or or you know, or your slider just doesn't have that break, or you're losing that one or two mile per hour that it doesn't seem it doesn't seem much you know when you're actually throwing it, but actually by the time it gets to the plate, you, it's just not what it was. So you might have a bad inning. You know, you might you know, so that could fluff it up. But I, I think I mean that really is probably more of a mean. I think. Uh, I would say like three, three is the new mean for ERA, I think across the board for all, all pitchers, you know, all starting pitchers. So uh, I would say uh steamer uh, needs to loosen, loosen up their tie a little bit. Uh, but I, if it's between three, three and three, five, I'll be just as happy as if it's, you know, in the twos. Yeah. I don't think a three, 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 five ERA is bad. Uh, in this day and age, especially now that Major League Baseball is trying to ramp up the scoring and all of that stuff and, and whatnot. So I think, yeah, I, I think ERAs are going to start creeping up, um, maybe not immediately, but yeah, I agree with you there. So Karen, then let's uh, let's up, wrap up the conversation on Alec Manoa. And last season put up a 4.1 F war season, uh, four wins above replacement. Um, this coming season, and, and I'm picking Steamer. I mean, I am uh, maybe cherry picking of my projections, but I, I typically, first of all, do Steamer because it is a little bit more tough. Um, and um, particularly for Alec Manoa, I picked it because it's very tough uh, on him. 
Um, so in fact, it has the lowest projected F war of all of the projections on fan graphs. So Karen, my question to you, and this will be our, um, our bet stamp over under Karen, Alec Manoa's ER or ERA, sorry, wins above replacement by steamer is 2.4. Karen, do you take the over or the under and why? <laughs> Okay, I'll, <clears throat> I'll I'll take the over on that. And, and while we're at it, um, what what's the over under on whoever wrote that projection ending up in drug or alcohol rehab within the next twelve months? <laughs> Let's say there's a non-zero chance. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, why would they think what 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 has he done to indicate that he's going to regress to that extent? No, I'm sorry. I, I see him at the very least in, in terms of wins above replacement. I, I see him duplicating what he did last season and, and possibly even going a little bit beyond it. He, he had a fantastic sophomore campaign, and I don't see him regressing anytime soon. Fair enough. Yeah. So, Steve, uh, I'm not going to give you the benefit of the um, the explanation, but do you take the over or the under on Alec Manoa in 2023, 2.4 wins above replacement? Oh, I'm going way over. And the reason for that is going back to my original thing. I think Alec Manoa is a 20 game winner this year. I think I think he wins 20 games, if not more. So I'm going mm -hmm. over on 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 real wins not made up number wins, actual real right. wins. I'm going over and I'm going way over on, you know, on the F war there. I mean, I think that, uh, I think yeah. in, in the fours, I think is where he's going to end up being, especially if my guess is correct and he wins 20 games. Right. Yeah. And I'm, and I will confidently take the over as well. Uh, 2.4 is, is almost insulting <laughs> to, to Alec Manoa, but there it is the over and under, um, Jay's from the Couch is sponsored by BetStamp. Download the BetStamp app in the App Store or Google Play and bet like a pro. Use code JFTC when you do.